Hi, everybody. Welcome to Conversations for Yoga Teachers. My name is Karen Fabian, and I am your host. Now, I am recording this on Monday, July 5th, so you may be watching it on or around that date. Um, I like to make most of my podcasts really um, just the kind of content you can listen to anytime. So quite frankly, it really doesn't matter when you're listening to it. Although sometimes I do run some promotions and those are time sensitive. So it's always a good idea. I try to show up every Monday and record. So sometimes it's good to actually set a reminder or subscribe to the podcast so you can listen really shortly around the time when the episode comes out. So you don't miss on any opportunities that I'm putting out there that are time limited. Whenever you're listening to this, though, I want to thank you so much for your time and for making the time to be here. My guess is that you're a yoga teacher, although even if you're not, maybe you're in the fitness world in some other way, a personal trainer or something along those lines, I want to welcome you as well. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking about teacher integrity. And for those of you who are longtime listeners of the podcast, you're probably wondering, well, why aren't we going to be talking about anatomy since anatomy is my specialty? And I promise you, there is a way that I weave anatomy into this topic. And then at the end uh, of this episode, we're going to be going into a little bit about goal setting. And this has to relate to a book that I'm reading that I am just so inspired by. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that when we get to it. I want to start out, though, just letting you know that all this week I'm running a special on the Bare Bones Yoga Practice Portal. Now, I don't know about you, but when lockdown began in March of 2020, I found myself practicing yoga a lot more. It really became a fundamental uh, way that I was keeping sane as well as keeping physically healthy. And in that time frame over really the course of uh, the year, I didn't start it right in March, I started in May, I built a practice portal and it essentially became a repository for a whole bunch of yoga sequences. And of course, because I specialize in anatomy, many of them have anatomical themes. And then I built around it. I built a meditation section and a journaling section. And I even built a section on research that I'm still looking to build out even further. And all of this content became a monthly membership. Well, over the past couple of weeks since lockdown, for the most part here in the United States has been lifted uh, and people are somewhat getting back to a different way of life, but with a little bit more freedom, I changed the format of the practice portal from a monthly membership to a one-time fee. And so instead of paying $10.99 a month, you can get access to everything that's in there right away by only paying $99. And for just this week, if you enroll in the Bare Bones Yoga Practice Portal, I'm going to give you a free private yoga session, including myofascial release with me. So to do that session, uh, it's going to be virtual. The only thing you would need to have on hand for the myofascial section is a myofascial release ball and or a foam roller. If you don't have that and you don't have time to get one beforehand, you can just order them online. You could even use a tennis ball. If you don't want to do the MFR part and you just want to do the yoga piece, that's fine too. But just to let you know that this promotion is a great way for you to work with me one-on-one -on -one and to find out a little bit more about how the practice can be customized just to you. Now, I want to add one more thing. If you are a teacher, you can use this private one-on-one -on -one session any way you want. You might want to just do some anatomy Q&A with me, and we can use Mr. Bones here as uh, our skeleton and as our guide when it comes to looking at certain muscles, where they are, what their primary action is, how they're active in different poses. So to get uh, access to the Bare Bones Yoga Practice Portal, all you have to do is go on my website, right on the homepage, you're going to see the link for the Bare Bones Yoga Practice Portal. Click the link, you'll see the description, and then the fee is just $99. When I see your, um, your purchase come through all this week, I'll contact you to set up that one-on-one -on -one session, and that's for free. Okay, so let's get into today's episode. What I wanted to talk about today is integrity. 
And I want to tell you a little bit about why integrity came up as a theme for me. It's, it's really always kind of a recurring theme in my mind anyway, uh, because it's really in my mind, very inextricably tied to your reputation. And your reputation is really everything. It's how people can depend on you. It's how people see you. It's, you know, whether or not they know you're going to show up. I mean, even just the virtual relationship I have with all of you as listeners, I feel um, a responsibility, not an obligation, but I feel a responsibility to show up not only for myself as a podcast creator and a yoga teacher, but also to you, the listener who spends time on the airwaves listening to this content. And, you know, maybe you've become accustomed. I know for me, I've become accustomed to several podcasts dropping live episodes on certain days of the week. And I'm really bummed if they don't do it on that particular day. And so I don't want that to be you. So I really uh, try to do my best to show up every Monday and record an episode. And to me, that is part of my integrity as a podcaster, as a, as a yoga teacher, uh, as part of what I'm offering as, as uh, my business to yoga teachers. So recently this, so those are other ways that I think about integrity, but over the past week or so, I had a scenario where I made a mistake and it really was, it wasn't a huge mistake, but it could have been perceived by a colleague as something that was significant. And it was the kind of thing that you know, I knew I had to share the mistake with this person, um, but it was the kind of thing that because the uh, exposure was so minimal, it might not have even gotten back to this person if I didn't say anything, although it probably would have. And so in reality, it's not the best example because I knew that it was a, a, a no brainer. And I had to disclose to this person, the mistake I made that somewhat impacted them. Um, but there was that flicker in my mind, like, Oh, I wonder if it'll even come out. And I immediately squelched that thought in my mind. And I reached out to this person and I explained the mistake I made and I explained the potential impact and the response was so great. And it was even better than I expected in terms of the person's perception being that it's really not an issue, don't worry about it. And I'm sure you've had scenarios in your life where maybe you've made a mistake and you've thought, you know, maybe I won't tell that person. And it really boils down to your integrity as a person as to whether or not you disclose whatever the error is that you made to that other party. And when we think about integrity, for us as yoga teachers, this is really um, a huge theme uh, that I think as teachers, we need to examine our relationship with integrity. And we need to be really honest with ourselves as to whether or not we are always operating with integrity in mind. Now, I want to just take a little sidebar here and say, you know, operating with integrity doesn't mean acting like you're holier than thou, doesn't mean acting like you're better than other people. In my mind, integrity is, you know, kind of inextricably attached to a lot of the fundamental teachings of Buddhism that you're putting your best self forward. Um, you are striving to be the best person you can be. And there's a lot of other ways, specific ways that it comes out for us as yoga teachers. And that's part of what I wanted to share in this episode today. This is really a topic that gets into more of the side of personal development and personal growth that I love to get into with teachers. Because let's face it, if you're a bundle of nerves, if you're um, feeling like you're, you're feeling guilty or you're feeling um, um, afraid or jealous or any of those kinds of emotions, it's really hard to come across clearly and confidently when you teach. So those kinds of issues come up and live on a personal level. And so that's why it's so important as yoga teachers, we deal with our stuff, right? Because if we don't deal with our stuff, inevitably it will come out 
in weird ways when we are teaching. And so that's why personal development is an important piece of teacher, yoga teacher development. It can't just all be about the anatomy or teaching techniques. We need as teachers to spend time exploring our inner selves so that we can come ac across as whole, as complete, as clear, as confident. Doesn't mean we're perfect, but it means that we are doing the work to bring forth anything that appears as an obstacle in our path. And so to that end, what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about integrity as it relates to us as yoga teachers. And I want to bring up a couple of ways that I believe integrity shows up for us as teachers. And I want to say right out of the gate, I want to hear from you in ways that integrity shows up for you as a teacher. So I want you to make a mental note as I'm going through these examples here. I want you to uh, send me a DM on Instagram or comment on my Instagram when I post about this podcast episode and let me know what are ways that integrity shows up for you as a teacher. All right. So the first thing is, what does integrity mean for teachers? So that's our common theme. The first way is um, staying current on training. You know, let's face it. If we had all the time and money in the world, we would probably constantly be in training. But the reality is we don't. But that doesn't mean we're off the hook. You know, certain organizations, like I'm a certified personal trainer through NASM and the National Academy of Sports Medicine, they require um, every two years you recertify. So at least every two years you are completing an educational program in order to continue to be certified. Of course, Yoga Alliance has different standards uh, for yoga teachers. Even though outside of those uh, criteria or requirements put upon us by outside parties, there really needs to be or should be uh, kind of a self-driven interest in staying current uh, on the latest information. And how you do that is really up to you. It's really more about the desire, the innate desire to stay current as a way to keep information fresh and to also make the biggest impact, right? Let's face it, if we're using outdated ways of teaching, outdated information, or even if we're just saying the same stuff over and over and over again, over time that gets tired and bored and will certainly come through in the way we come across to our students. So that's one way, staying current on training. The other thing is, and this is really where the anatomy piece comes in to this conversation around integrity. This idea that we are only as teachers sharing what we know versus what we heard, right? Like think of like gossip when you were in high school and you like heard something and you would go out and repeat it or, you know, anything like in your personal life or maybe you hear about somebody from somebody else, like people that you know. It's a very different thing when you share what you know. And as yoga teachers, we're in the process or we're in the um, position of educating our students about yoga, about movement, about health, about the mechanics of the body. And so as such, we have both a professional responsibility and also a responsibility from an integrity standpoint to be sharing what we know. So that might be a situation where we might say, oh, you know, I think you can still practice even with that kind of injury when maybe you don't know that that's the case. Maybe you're also way overstepping your bounds when it comes to professional um, boundaries, right? But then on a more, uh, I think, relatable level, where this comes up a lot for yoga teachers is the scenario where we're cueing and sharing stuff we heard versus cueing and sharing things we know. And this can be a very subtle difference because you might say, well, Karen, I heard all these cues because this is what I was trained to say. This is what I picked up in my training. Just because I can't really give you the why behind all of these cues doesn't mean I'm out of integrity. I was depending on the teacher who was leading my training to share all this information and for it to be correct. And, you know, I think 
there is some truth to that. Of course, as a mentee in training, you're going to look to the mentor leading the training and you're going to have faith. And hopefully you did your due diligence on the training program you, you took for your 200 hour. And you're going to believe that the information they're giving you is accurate and correct. However, that doesn't get you off the hook in terms of your responsibility to ask questions around clarifying, well, why is the cue that? Because ultimately you're going to be the megaphone <laughs> through which that information lands on your students. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. I have heard this from, from real live teachers who are actively teaching and training other teachers in conversation with them about certain cues, talking about the anatomy rationale behind the cue, the feedback that I got was, I'm not really sure that's what I was trained to say. No teacher should ever have that as the only thing they can offer up as the reason behind a cue they're sharing. To be in integrity as a teacher, we should be sharing from what we know. And guess what? When you share from what you know, do you know what's tied to that? Confidence. Confidence. That's what so many teachers tell me they're looking for. They're looking for more confidence. Well, guess what? Share from what you know and your confidence will grow. I can't believe I just made up that rhyme. Truly, it just came to me. It was like <laughs> it came, came through a lightning bolt into my brain. You know, this is, this is really where so many teachers get tied up in knots. They're sharing cues and they really know in their gut, they don't know the why behind them. And they don't understand the mechanics of what the cue is expressing. Maybe they don't really know where the muscle is that they're referring to, or maybe they're saying contract the such and such a muscle in this pose, but they're not really sure if that's contracting in that pose. Maybe they heard it from somebody on YouTube or heard it in a class that they took online recently or read it in a book. But if they needed to discuss why they shared it, they really couldn't break it down. I'm gonna give you a little secret. And this is something that I talk to yoga teachers about when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with them uh, because they're in my blueprint learning program. You can teach from action because just about every yoga teacher knows the actions that should be taken in a pose. And you can still teach a really powerful class. And because you know the actions you want your students to do, like step your foot forward or hug your hips in or wrap your upper thigh on your lower thigh or draw your belly button into your spine, those are all action cues. And because you know them, you can share them with confidence rather than saying, engage your core to activate your rectus abdominis. You know, even though that may be correct, maybe you're like in your head, you're like, where is the rectus abdominis? By the way, it runs from your pubic bone to your sternum and it flexes the spine. Needless to say, or be that as it may, you know, that's a, uh, I don't even want to say a backup plan, but that's an alternative that you can use so that you're always in integrity so that you don't find yourself in a scenario where you're sharing what you don't know. Okay. So that's number two. The next thing is, what does integrity mean for teachers? That's our overall theme. Being professional and honest in your interactions with others. So that kind of gets to the story I started out with at the beginning of this episode. And there are plenty of interactions you have with studio owners, with colleagues in your teacher training, with other teachers you might cross paths with, with teachers on social media, with you know people that you might see one-on-one. -on -one having those relationships being professional and honest. Uh, and, and that is reflected in all the uh, interactions you would have with them. And then the last thing is following through on what you said you would, right? So let's say you're talking to a studio owner and they want you to get them a couple of pieces of information so they can get your, your job application processed, getting that to them in a timely way. Let's say that, you know, you need to get somebody else something, you know, this is something about life, but as it relates to being a yoga teacher, there are different scenarios where you might be dependent upon to get information to somebody else. And the ability to follow through is part of your integrity as a teacher. Now, 
the next thing I want to do is talk about, you know, that's really integrity as it relates to your relationship to other people. So now I want to turn it inward a bit, right? Remember that theme, Pratyahara on the eight limbed path, right? Turning the lens inward. So let's talk about integrity as it relates to you. So this is integrity with yourself. So one thing about having integrity with yourself is to be supportive to yourself around your endeavors, right? To support in whatever way necessary so that you can achieve what you need to achieve. So if that means you're taking time off or if that, or if that means you're hiring, hiring somebody to help you do whatever it is you need to do, or maybe it's getting some help uh, in your life with something else that you can offload to somebody else so that you have time to study and to do whatever it is you're working on. You know, being supportive to yourself around your endeavors is really the only way that stuff is going to get done, right? No one's going to do the work for you. And so when we talk about as yoga teachers, we want to learn anatomy, for instance, no one's going to do that for you. There are certainly better ways to learn anatomy than other ways, right? There are lots of ways to learn anatomy. And I certainly know from teachers who enroll in my program, oftentimes by the time they enroll in the Blueprint Learning Program, they've tried three or four other ways. One of them being they're trying to learn it on their own. Another one being they're buying a bunch of books. And another one being they're watching a bunch of videos. And none of those ways is working for them. You know, part of being support, being in integrity with yourself is being supportive of you reaching, of yourself as it relates to you reaching the goals that you have in your life. And I'll also say this, and I had this conversation um, last night with my partner, you know, ask yourself right out of the gate, ask yourself when it comes to your teaching, your yoga teaching, right? Because I mean, all of what we're talking about here relates to you as a person and me as a person, but here let's frame it in the context of being a yoga teacher, because that's my domain. That's what we're really focusing on here. Ask yourself, what's your biggest goal? for the next six months, right? From July 1 to 1231, that's six months. What's your biggest goal for the rest of this year around your teaching? Because that's really where you need to start, right? Once you have a goal that's born out of a desire, now you can start, other things will start to take shape around it. Namely, this first thing here, being supportive towards yourself in reaching that goal. All right, so let's talk about number two as it relates to having integrity with yourself. Avoiding negative self-talk. Oh my goodness, <laughs> right? None of these things are super easy, but just calling them forth, I think is so important. So negative self-talk. I mean, I talk to teachers who are, you know, beating themselves up because they wish they were younger or they don't feel like they can compete out there because they don't have enough followers on Instagram. You know, screw that. You know, there are plenty of people on Instagram that have tons of followers and their impact is meh, right? Or there are other people who have not huge social media following and they have a huge impact, right? So I would never suggest that you look at vanity metrics as an indicator of anything other than just, it's just a number. Um, and so whatever you're finding your negative self-talk is around in terms of your yoga teaching, really take some time to create techniques to remind you when this negative self-talk comes up to abandon it. So whether that's a mantra, whether that's something you wear, like a bracelet, something tactile that you do to just tell yourself, Hey, stop, right? Redirect, reframe, move past it. So that's number two. Uh, having integrity with yourself also means taking time for an honest assessment of your abilities, right? There's nothing wrong with acknowledging you don't know anatomy. There's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving it the good old college try and trying to learn it yourself. I think the challenge, again, let's kind of hone in here on, on the niche that that I like to talk about, which is anatomy. I think the challenge is when teachers resist, resist, resist investing in themselves to learn anatomy after multiple attempts to learn it on their own, or the worst 
the 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 more problematic self talk, which is, oh, I don't really need to know that anyway. Like it's not like anybody's going to come into your class and quiz you on whether or not you know what you're saying. But this is why you know it's a very subtle thing. This is why integrity is such an important thing to talk about because because of the fact that no one's going to check you on what you're doing out there as a teacher, the only person that can check you on it is yourself. And if you don't have integrity with yourself, you're on a very slippery slope because that's when we start to doubt ourselves. That's when we start to know we're not working in integrity. And, you know, there are plenty of people that have imposter syndrome that have nothing to fear, but that's a scenario where you should be feeling like an imposter because that's essentially what you're doing. Um, so taking time for an honest assessment of your abilities. So for you as a yoga teacher, that might mean sitting down and being really honest with yourself about what are the skills you want to build and then work backwards from that. What is the knowledge you need in order to have those skills? All right. So the next thing is avoiding procrastination when it comes to learning, finishing, or following through on tasks. I I hear this a lot from teachers. I don't have the time. I don't have the time. I can't do it right now. I can't get to it. I wish I could, but I can't. And, you know, I get it. <laughs> you know, I've got a lot going on. You've got a lot going on. And again, these are not things that someone's going to come up to you and say, you better do this or you haven't done this, which is why it comes back, friends, to integrity. If you keep putting off the learning that you know in your heart you need to do, the only person that's going to lose in that scenario besides you are your students. And ultimately, you're not going to make the impact you want. You know, it's kind of like if someone said to you, you could learn what you need to learn so much faster and with better results, or you could try to do it yourself. What would you choose? Of course, you would choose the, the first thing, right? faster and with better results. But so many yoga teachers say, you know what, I'm just going to do it myself. I'm just going to do it myself. You know, I, in my professional career, I worked a lot with nurses and I'm not a nurse. And that was always an interesting dynamic. Um, and nurses are very self-reliant, very procedural, very on top of things. And, you know, I, I think about that a lot, that profile a lot when I work with yoga teachers, that there is kind of this common thread of self-reliance, you know, and I think that that's a great quality. I think where it can trip us up is when we're highly resistant to investing in ourselves, to learn what we know we need to learn, because we think, you know what, I can just do it myself. You know, if you were going to paint your whole house, you could probably do it yourself, <laughs> but man, what a huge project that would be versus just hiring somebody to do it. So that's the second, that's the, the next thing. And then the last thing, this is a big one. Having integrity with yourself means not letting fear prevent you from putting yourself out there. I mean, I have over the past year and a half in particular, as I've had more teachers enroll in my program, I've had more conversations with teachers who are afraid to teach even though they've bought my program, even though they've completed a 200 hour training, even though they might've taken other trainings. So they've invested all this money. They know they want to teach, but they're afraid. And their fears can be around things like they're afraid they're too old. They're afraid their body type isn't right. They're afraid the way they look isn't appropriate. They're afraid, all these things. And you know, having integrity with yourself means that you are putting yourself out there, even when you are afraid, as part of the commitment you're making to yourself to reach the goals you want to reach, right? It all relates back to the first thing I said, being supportive of your endeavors. That's part of self-love, self-care, self-health, taking care of your health, right? It's all related. All right. So what I want to do is I want to go to this book and I want to read you. This is a book by Napoleon Hill, and I'm going to read you the title. And you're probably going to be like, what does that have to do with anything that we're talking about? The title of the book is Think and Grow Rich. And at random, I picked this up when I was getting copies made at FedEx Kinko's. And as it turns out, I guess it's one of the most popular self-help books 
out there. And even though Think and Grow Rich, you know, you think it's a book about money, it's really a book about personal development. And in the middle of the book here, um, there is a list, which is really, really good. And it's a self analysis questionnaire for personal inventory. And it's a pretty long list that would be meant for you to go through yourself. Um, if you do get the book, it's on page 128. And I'm just going to read a couple of these because it's an exhaustive list, but I'm going to read the ones that relate specifically to us as yoga teachers. Okay. So number one, have I attained the goal, which I established as my objective for this year? right? So this would be something that you would do at the end of the year, you would look back and assess. But the reason I'm reading this to you now is because you've now got six months left till the end of 2021. So imagine yourself asking yourself these questions at the end of the year, and then work backwards, identify what you need to do to have the answers to these questions that you want, and then do what you need to do. Okay. So this is kind of like, <laughs> I don't want to say a warning, but it's a huge opportunity for you to like really get it together and come up with an action plan so that the answers to these questions, when you ask yourself these questions on 1231 can be positive. All right. So first one, have I attained the goal, which I established as my objective for this year? The second, have I delivered service of the best possible quality of which I was capable or could I have improved any part of this service? So that would relate to teaching privates, teaching classes, teaching online, right? Number three, have I delivered service in the greatest possible quality and quantity, right? So did I have more time that I could have given? Did I let fear get in the way of me putting myself out there, what I was talking about before? Number four, has the spirit of my conduct been harmonious and cooperative at all times? That it's relating to what I talked about earlier, your interface, your interaction with other teachers. Have I improved my personality? And if so, in what ways? This book was written a long time ago. So I think personality is kind of an outdated phrase for that term for that. But, you know, have I improved myself? What work have you done? Are you doing on yourself? What work needs to be done on yourself by yourself so that you can be the best version of yourself by the end of the year? Have you been persistent? Have I been persistent in following my plans through to completion, right? Am I just dropping the ball on myself? Am I sticking with it? Am I procrastinating? I mean, these are all real questions. They're tough questions, but they're the questions that we all should be asking ourselves if we wanna you know, put our best self out there and live the life that we want to live. Have I permitted any one or more uh, of the six basic fears to decrease my efficiency, my work? Have I been overcautious or undercautious? Oh my God, I get that. I hear that so much when I talk to teachers. I'm, I'm really concerned. I'm not sure. I don't know if I want to, you know, one of the signs of highly successful people is they just do it. They take action, even knowing that maybe it's not going to work out. And, you know, a lot of yoga teachers that I talk to are very hesitant, very unsure, very slow to take action. And every time that you delay, it's just delay on you reaching the goals you want to reach. In what ways have I improved my ability to render service? Have I expressed either openly or secretly any form of egotism, right? Working uh, from the ego, that's certainly a theme in, in uh uh, yogic philosophy. Um, how may I rebudget my time and change my habits so I will be more efficient during the coming year? Have I been guilty of any conduct which was not approved by my conscience, right? And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. No one's going to come into your class and say, hey, you, do you know the anatomy behind that cue you just shared? you're the only one that's going to be able to check yourself on whether or not you are operating in integrity around what you're saying to your students. Am I in the right role as a yoga teacher? If not, why not? Have I been unfair to anyone? Have I been guilty of any conduct that was not, well, I just said that. Um, uh, how may I rebudget my time and change my habits so I will be more efficient during the coming year? So again, just really important questions. And, you know, you may be listening to this and you may say, ah, oh, Karen, you know what? I, I, 
I just will just keep on doing what I'm doing and I'm fine. And, and that's okay. That's your choice. This is not me forcing anything on you. This is really for yoga teachers out there who want to make an impact, who want to create um, uh, the best possible scenarios for themselves as a teacher and really want to grow as a teacher. And none of that, um, I was going to say it doesn't come easy, but I don't want to make it a hard, easy thing. It's just that it takes um, continual rework. Uh, as does being the best person you can possibly be. That takes constant work. Um, but rather than looking at it as like heavy lifting work, it's important that we reframe it if we're open to it and looking at it as just the necessary work of being human, right? So the necessary work of being human and in the context of being a yoga teacher, the necessary work of striving to be the best possible teacher you can be because you want to help as many people as possible in the best way that you can. So in closing today, what I want to do is this, because um, you know, so many of you are out there and you're probably stuck on understanding anatomy, I'm going to close by directing you to my website. I've got a 10 key steps PDF on there, 10 key steps to learning anatomy. It'll at least give you some structure to your self-study efforts, but keep in mind, you can always reach out to me and I'm happy to do um, a free one-on-one -on -one kind of strategy session with you so that we can come up with a better plan than just kind of floundering out there on your own and trying to figure it all out by yourself. So I want to thank you so much. If you have made it this far, you're all the way at the end of this episode. And I want to just acknowledge you for sticking with this episode. I hope that means you enjoyed it and I would love to hear from you. So don't forget, let me know what's come up for you when you listen to this episode. If you have any comments on it, leave them on my social media, send me an email, karen at barebonesyoga.com. Send me a direct message on Instagram, barebonesyoga. I would love to hear from you. So thank you so much for listening. I'll see you next week on the next episode of Conversations for Yoga Teachers. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when the episode goes live. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you soon. Namaste.